running out of that hotel room with feet. And he, he, he came out and he grabbed me by my hair and he dragged me back. And um, he just hit the shit out of me until I stopped fighting. And then he had his way. Your son, he died because of your He's leg. targeted because he, he's my son. He, like, he was about to, he was working on his EP. I bought Daladelphia for him. So he didn't have to sign to a company because I knew what it was going to do. He interned at Rock Nation. And they approached him to sacrifice me. I have three victims right now who are willing to give testimony about not only what Mr. Carter has done to them, but his wife as well. They're a nasty little couple. They do nasty things. What do you think happened with Kim Keeping Paul? people against their will. Putting people on planes while they're unconscious, just like Aaliyah got on that plane. Unconscious. There's a lot of things that people don't want to talk about, Pierce. In an emotional outburst, Jaguar Wright, the outspoken singer and whistleblower, has once again come forward with shocking allegations. But this time, she's claiming her life is at stake unnecessary court fees and litigations because Jay-Z wants me broken, stopped, or under his control. And it ain't gonna happen, Sean. I'm never gonna be under your control. Never. You, you need to learn how to control your wife and her friends and their mouths. Cause you got Beyonce in the beehive looking real dumb right now. Five million unfollowed and that number's gonna go up with every image in one of those freak off tapes. And God help if anybody here, how that bitch really talks about people with her They'll start unfollowing by the tens of hundreds. Again. And they should. Because the truth is, the only reason they were following was because of the witchcraft and the spells that were being pushed out through the media. Y'all ain't fans because y'all really love them and y'all really think they're the best. You're fans because you fell for the hype. And they are hypes. I know I can say. I've been able to do that my whole life. And they've been trying to stop me my whole career. Because see, unlike Beyonce, I'm not willing to hurt people to get famous. See, that's the part of the story that they're not telling y'all. That the more terrible you are, the more they'll protect you. Diddy and Jay-Z have a long history together, both rising to fame at around the same time. Jaguar Wright didn't hold back, claiming Jay-Z was a regular at Diddy's infamous freak-off parties, where wild, questionable things were said to go down. Other celebrities have also pointed out that Jay-Z was regularly seen at these parties, further fueling speculation about what really went on behind the scenes and raising questions about his involvement. I was at a party at Diddy Crib in, in LA. This was uh this was this was the beginning of, of 2020. You know what I mean? Uh Diddy had he had put everybody else out the crib, like the, the influx of people he had put him out. But he had he had a uh, he had took a, a liking to me in particular around the time, man. It was really, you know, what I mean, like has been targeting Jay Z for a while, and now 
Fans are growing concerned for her safety, given how many stories we've heard of people who mysteriously disappear or die after speaking out. People are wondering if Jaguar could be in real danger, but what exactly does she know about Jay-Z, and is it worth risking her life? In one of our previous interviews, you said that, um, that there were hundreds of videos that would incriminate Diddy. Do you think that this is the beginning of these videos being uh, public for us to see? Or do you think this is the end? I think y'all ain't see shit yet. It's just taste. The thing that f***s me up is know what boo done for me but i know there's another tape of me and i'm just waiting to see where that's going running out of that hotel room with feet and he he, he came out he grabbed me by my hair and he drug me back. And um, he just hit the shit out of me until I stopped fighting. And then he had his way. Was it somebody in the industry? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Huh. Mm. The media side wants us that wants me to ask who, but then the brotherly side wants you to keep that private. So if you want to disclose it, you can, but if not, we definitely respect that too. I'ma pay my debt and I'ma collect what's owed to me in my own way. Y'all don't want nothing to do with that. Trust me. You don't want me to say that. Ooh, yeah. Not today. Respect. Yeah. So let's talk. I seen a video. What I will say is that Sean Carter is vicious and violent. And what he don't do with his own hands, he will pay others to do. And he films it all and he watches it. Hmm. Like I Double. said, there's another tape of me out there. I just don't know where it's going to pop up. Hmm. Hmm. So there's a video circulating out there. Um, I've seen it today, actually. Would you speak? I'm on a Diddy not? tape. Say it again. I'm on a Diddy tape. W which one? that person I was just speaking of mm. I was there with him mm. <laughs> he speak on um, Rihanna there was a video about, talking about Rihanna speaking on Jay-Z about, um, about me ev investigating Evan Rogers and trying to figure out how he managed to get a 14 year old girl in a hotel room in the middle of the night, transport her without parental supervision or consent on a private plane to New York to dump her off in an audit office with Mr. Carter to be there alone for nearly six hours before her father was flown up to collect a $500,000 check for her Fastly, I mean, she she had the fastest ink deal in Def Jam history, under 20 hours. Everyone in New York was talking about it. It was funny, it was a hush and, and whispers all over, Rihanna, oh my God, he's got Rihanna up there. Everyone talked about it in New York. I was in New York that day. I remember the day your dad got there. Rich called and was like, they about to make the deal. You know, what was the buzz on Rihanna at that time? Like, I, I don't know. The fact that she was getting signed <clears throat> so quickly mm. out of nowhere. They had 50 other projects that were up to be signed that mm. totally got thrown to the side because Evan Rogers brought some little girl up from the, what, the Barbados? Yeah. yeah. With no demo? Right. No star search. No. <clears throat> Just her auditioning in a hotel room for a grown man at 3 a.m. in the morning without Ooh. parental supervision. I don't know. That's starting to sound like trafficking. He's smarter. He's patient. 
he's not sloppy. Mm -hmm. This been lining up people he calls friends and stepping to the side while they get hit by the guillotine for 30 years. worse so when you think his moment of reckoning is, is coming because we talk about that often on the platform and not that we we don't know him to wish anything bad on anybody but we've heard that too so i think the kpd trial has the potential to force sean combs to finally be honest about some things that he hasn't been honest about, which could create great leverage for knocking that big lip camel face back into the oblivion in the depths of hell where he came from. Mm. And I'm gonna be right there. Every step of the way. Jaguar Wright also made some shocking allegations about Jay-Z and Beyonce during her recent interview with Piers Morgan. Although Jay-Z and Beyonce weren't present to respond, it seems Jaguar's comments have stirred something in Jay-Z's camp. According to rumors, Jay-Z has allegedly sent people to silence her, but Jaguar refuses to be bullied. Here's what she had to say to Piers. You want to know why there's no vindication for me? Mm. Because for four years, I've been screaming, not just Diddy, but Diddy and Jay-Z are monsters. And the victim-making machine kept going on. Jay-Z has been notable by his silence since uh, these charges were brought against Diddy. Why do you think that is? Because that's what he does. He starts little fires everywhere, forces everyone involved to go and carry water while he sneaks away without a response that changes now, Sean. You must respond. You have no choice. Harvey Weinstein, Jeffrey Epstein, Robert Kelly, Sean Combs have one person in common, professionally and privately, Sean Carter. This has been a fist of tyranny that has been punching through our culture and our society for decades. It must stop. There's been obviously a lot Cruelty of- Cruelty-free artistry. Right, there's been a lot of uh, rumor mill about what has happened in the rap world. A lot of allegations that the misogyny in the lyrics clearly was based on mm -hmm. a general misogyny towards women away from the music. And that clearly seems to have been borne out by these charges against Diddy, which if he's found guilty of all this, he's never coming out of prison. How dangerous do you think? Thank God. How dangerous do you think he is as a person? I think he's one of the most dangerous people I've ever met. A lot of people have been questioning. Well, she doesn't really know him. She has no knowledge of him. She doesn't have a picture with him. I'm smarter than Claudia Jordan. I would never take a picture with the devil. Everyone knew he was the devil. He's been the devil for 30 years. He's been covered and protected by not only Clive Davis, but Lucian Grange. He was selected to be the demon that he is to keep the culture in line so the industry could continue to rape it for all of its precious jewels. We have too many lost. The list of lost is ridiculous. And everyone knows Diddy was selected for this job. He's the Judas. How many, mm -hmm. how many victims potentially do you think there could be? Thousands, thousands. I've talked to hundreds that I deal with still myself. I have three victims right now who are willing to give testimony about not only what Mr. Carter has done to them, but his wife as well. They're a nasty little couple. They do nasty things. What do you think happened with Kim Keeping Paul? people against their will, putting people on planes while they're unconscious, just like Aaliyah got on that plane unconscious. There's a lot of things that people don't want to talk about, Pierce. Listen, like I said, Jay-Z and Beyonce are not here, uh, unfortunately, to respond to that. I know. Uh but the conversation didn't stop there. Jaguar went on to discuss the infamous freak-off parties she claims are held in the industry, revealing more about the unsettling atmosphere surrounding them. For those who were never at these freak-off parties, what were they like? Mm -hmm. 
See, this is the thing. Everything that I'm about to say to you is not my firsthand knowledge. It is my firsthand witness account experience. I was a worker. I was a dominatrix before I got my record deal. That's how I know how the dark world and the world and the entertainment world run hand in hand. That's why the movie Blink Twice is so important. Salute to Zoe Kravitz. The workers that I have worked with throughout the years and continue to work with even to this day have worn hidden cameras. I have my own tapes. I've seen what they do. The ritualistic behaviors, the drugging, putting girls in suitcases, dumping them in alleyways. It's, it's, it's horrifying. And it's all done under the protection of this is going to be paid off. There's another NDA. This is going to be, it's terrible. In light of Jaguar's shocking revelations, a recent interview with a former attendee has just dropped, offering a detailed account of what goes down at these events and the activities involved. So I was walking with one girl, she's a Puerto Rican girl. So P. Diddy's son was like, you. And I'm like, me or her? And then he was like, no, you, come here. So I went to him and he gave me some shoes. So these shoes was like some um, terry cloth, like robe shoes, white shoes. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with these? He was like, go in the house with these. He was like, everybody who gets these shoes, you get to go in the house. But I'm thinking you could just go in the house if you want to, but everybody can't go in the house. They're literally selectively picking who they want. So I'm like, well, what about my friend? He was like, no, only you. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm holding the shoes. I'm walking around. You know, I'm a good loyal friend. I'm not going to go inside a house where they said my friend can't go. So we just walking around mingling. But we tripping out, looking at everybody like they off everything smoking and jumping around like hooligans and so I seen P. Diddy or whatever and I seen him with the prince I'm not gonna say what he was doing but something really I get real nervous <laughs> something real crazy because I don't like to really expose people I could talk about me but when it's about like me and my family because it's us but when it's other people bro doing something real that's all I'm gonna say um so that we could see and so that we can get turned on, okay? So he's doing something with himself. And I'm like, <laughs> girl, do you see him? She's like, yes, but mind you, we're screaming like, girl, do you see him? Oh my God, because of the music. And I'm just like, whatever. Then he starts to act like really obnoxious, like I'm the king of the world, jumping around, doing all this stuff. So I'm like, okay, that's regular P Diddy shit. But what got me was how he walked up to me and was like, why are you not in the house? And I'm like, what do you mean? He like, how are you enjoying my house? So we had a little talk or whatever. He started talking about all these things. Oh, yeah, you're the one that, you know, I seen was telling me about the prince. He's like, um, oh, yeah, um, it's very nice to meet you. Like, your life is not going to be the same. Da, 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 da. They, we started talking about going to Cuba. Are you going to Cuba with us? I'm like, what? And that's the thing. I didn't really know about this. So this is when I start asking around or whatever. I said that in the last interview. But to get to the point, I ended up going in the house because he was on me, like, going to that house. I'm like, okay. And then the person that he was dating at that time, we're not going to say her name, but we all know, she came and was, like, looking at him like, what are you doing? Because he was talking to me for too long. So she came to, like, rub on his shoulders or whatever, and he just pushed her. And I'm looking like real uncomfortable, like, oh, I know what this is about. I don't want to be in the middle of there or whatever. So that's what made me go into the house because I'm like, okay, let me just go in the house. So I tell my friend, like, wait right here, girl. Let me just put on these shoes, see what this house is about. Walk up in there. I don't judge people because at the time I was just smoking weed. But you know when people are out of their mind and you know when people... You know what you don't want to be a part of. And it's just like, I'm seeing stuff that you see on the movies. I'm, this corner, this got going on. This corner, they over here doing this. This corner, they over there having This corner, I'm just going to say, because I don't know what I can say, because I'm not trying to be incriminating myself, but they were dressed up like little Harajuku Barbies. Like what? Little people, okay? We're not going to say what type of little people, but like a fetish. And I'm looking like, what are they doing here? Like dressed up, little um, red lipstick, like they weren't supposed to be there. 
But I'm just looking like maybe it's some type of production going on. But why would they be at this party at seven o'clock in the morning with grown people? Like why why would they be here? So I was just like, okay, whatever. Like <laughs> But then when I'm looking in this corner, this corner, this person laid out, and I'm looking like, what's going on? Then I'm seeing like Instagram models or whatever. I'm like, oh, hey, so I'm kind of getting distracted, feeling like kind of comfortable, like she's here. Oh my God, she's here. And then I see P. Diddy, you know, walking through the house, like with his eyes on me. Like, you know, like, is this, you know, you see, like, are, are you agreeing with this? Is this is, and I don't. Now mind you, I still got my friend out there, so. I walked out of the house and I'm telling her like, oh my God, bitch, like this is, this is, oh my God, you should, she like for real, but I'm just like, I'm not even tripping like, oh well, like this nigga's weird, like, you know? So I'm really looking at the situation like, I don't even want to be involved in this type of stuff because once I see something, I can't get it out of my mind. And I'm like a hypochondriac, like I keep on having flashbacks about it. So whatever. So of course I come out. And then here he goes again. And another rapper, well-known rapper, comes and starts feeling on me like, hey, you. So now it just seems like everybody is faded at this point. They're either drunk or on all the drugs, obviously, with this house music. So now I just feel like trapped in. Like, I don't like it. And I know the devil when I see it. Because by me being so spiritual and tapped in, I know when something is not right. I'm not judging, but I just don't want to be a part of it. Because how am I going to get out of this like I'm already here and then I heard conversations or whatever and then P. Diddy was like that's the one that I want that's I want her so now I feel like you know they plotting on me like did you bring me here on purpose like is this the you know producer you was talking about and I came here specifically with the prince to rub elbows with people to network for um the music week but then I put two and two together like the Prince have been saying, your life is never going to be the same. You're going to be happy. Somebody's expecting you. And I just feel like that was the time that I was going to get traffic or, you know, drugged or, or, or something like that. Piers Morgan found himself in a tough spot after Jaguar's explosive claims. It didn't take long for Beyonce and Jay-Z's legal team to act. They swiftly reached out to Piers' team, firmly asserting that Wright's claims were baseless and nothing more than misinformation. Following this, Piers addressed the situation and issued an apology for the accusations made during the interview. I know why there's no vindication for me, because for four years, I've been screaming, not just Diddy, but Diddy and Jay-Z are monsters. And the victim-making machine kept going on. Jay-Z has been notable by his silence since uh, these charges were brought against Diddy. Why do you think that is? Because that's what he does. He starts little fires everywhere, forces everyone involved to go and carry water while he sneaks away without a response. That changes now, Sean. You must respond. You have no choice. Harvey Weinstein, Jeffrey Epstein, Robert Kelly, Sean Combs have one person in common, professionally and privately. Sean Carter, this has been a fist of tyranny that has been punching through our culture and our society for decades. It must stop. There's been obviously a lot Cruelty of- Cruelty-free artistry. Right, there's been a lot of uh, rumor mill about what has happened in the rap world. A lot of allegations that the misogyny in the lyrics clearly was based on mm. a general misogyny towards women away from the music. And that clearly seems to have been borne out by these charges against Diddy, which if he's found guilty of all this, he's never coming out of prison. How dangerous do you think- Thank God. He, how dangerous do you think he is as a person? I think he's one of the most dangerous people I've ever met. A lot of people have been questioning, well, she doesn't really know him. She has no knowledge of him. She doesn't have a picture with him. I'm smarter than Claudia Jordan. I would never take a picture with the devil. Everyone knew he was the devil. He's been the devil for 30 years. He's been covered and protected by not only Clive Davis, but Lucian Grange. 
He was selected to be the demon that he is to keep the culture in line so the industry could continue to rape it for all of its precious jewels. We have too many lost. The list of lost is ridiculous. And everyone knows Diddy was selected for this job. Jaguar Wright thinks it won't be long before Jay-Z follows Diddy behind bars. She claims that producer Evan Rogers can help uncover Jay-Z's secrets. What, what would it take for Jay-Z to go down like Diddy did? I don't know. But I got an idea that Evan Rogers is going to help me figure that out. And who is Evan? Evan was the producer who only seemed to work on teeny bopper projects, who discovered Rihanna at 3 a.m. in the morning in a hotel room on the island where she comes from with no parental supervision. And then she was put on a private plane, a minor, from one country to another without parental supervision. And she ended up in a boardroom with Mr. Carter without parental supervision. Y'all got young children, would you just let your daughter leave and go to a whole other country with some <laughs> you don't know? Absolutely not. Doing talent shows at 3 a.m. <laughs> so you're saying that the rumors are true. There are rumors uh, circulating that Rihanna was actually trafficked here. Are you saying that Starting that is- to sound that way. Cause a daddy ain't show up till 24 hours later to pick up a half a million dollar check for his daughter's ass. Maybe we should look more into that album, Auntie. That album cover was disturbing. A child bride with a crown over her head and blood smeared on her face. I don't know. <laughs> How don't people see SOSs anymore? <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm just crazy. As Jaguar Wright makes new claims, we must ask, is she lying? Many people are skeptical of her motives, questioning whether she's just seeking attention. For pop off. I ain't got no problem with the Carters. I ain't got no problem with billionaires. I can learn from a billionaire. True, now that's true. That's true. The rest of the personal matters, they're, they're, they're personal matters. But all, all I'm really about right now is, 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 is that, that creating and sustaining and supporting at that institution. Yeah. So me and, me and Mr. Carter have unfinished business. And there's a whole generation that need to see that moment celebrated on television one more again. It's just gonna be difficult because of the roots, you know? Yeah, yeah, I, I look, believe Cause me. Cause they, they'll probably all be in jail by the time the 20th anniversary comes. Or if there's any truth at all to her accusations. Did you ever see uh, Jaguar right out of Diddy Point? I've seen pictures of her with people. Uh, were there parties going on? I don't, I don't, I mean, necessarily no. I don't think that she was at a Diddy party though. She said she used to come there, go there. Uh, I think she'd be capping. I think a lot of that was cap. Been working for Orlando Brown. Orlando's brilliant. He's highly intelligent. Especially when she was like, yo, that's the best acting he does is his interviews. Go that shit that he does is a character. Actually, the shit that he does online is the best acting he does. Like, bitch, do you know Orlando? <laughs> is it? <laughs> like, do you even know me? Like, don't play with me. <laughs> Expose your ass, bitch. <laughs> Message. Joe Budden was just like, 
yo i was actually believing a lot of the stuff you were saying until you just randomly threw me in it you have to you have to realize at a point it, it's impossible that this woman knows every predator every nefarious evil person in the industry and at a point she becomes just like someone who's cynically just mentioning people's names i believe like, i'll give her the benefit of the doubt i see her with jay-z whatever she said about jay-z she knows more than me i say that same thing about sean combs when she's mentioning certain other people i i don't know if she was even around oh what was her name um like, like put like this She's talking about how the Super Bowl this year should go with Kendrick and TDE and Jay-Z. Like, again, do you think she's speaking from a place of, oh, she knows? Or maybe she's also, like, speculating a bit. But it's not all one-sided. We have to acknowledge that some of her claims have turned out to be true. I sat right here and told y'all there was activity on the dark net. Videos were being distributed and were going to be sold for profit because the diddler needs the money. Did I not say that? Right here. Selling his own God evidence that would put him in jail against him on the dark net to the highest bidder. He's selling it because he needs the cash. The last freak off tape that just got sold on the dark net went for 500 million. It had multiple stars in it. Nicki Minaj, Rihanna, Chris Brown, Justin Bieber, Drake. And now we got a lawyer who has seen it. She, she corroborated the fact that she saw the very videotapes that I said were about to be sold right here on this couch just a couple months ago. But I ain't got no receipts. Okay. You, you know what my receipt is? Reality and time. This leads us to another important question. When Jaguar puts out so many accusations, isn't it likely that at least one of them will end up being true? Even a broken clock is right twice a day. All we can do for now is await the investigation's conclusion to shed light on the situation. In the meantime, let's keep the discussion alive. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss the latest tea. Until then fam, keep it real.